Sourcing the parts for and putting together a kit that will fit a 6.9 is not an easy task. It's primarily due to the special hoses that are required. You know, getting a fuel pump's not hard. Getting a filter is not difficult. There are still accumulators readily available, but it's some of these hoses are kind of tough to find and if you get the wrong one you know it's really frustrating when you got it all torn apart and don't have the right hoses and the other thing is there's a couple different versions of this and with the different versions come different hoses so you have to be real careful and I want to warn you now don't assume just because you order by VIN number everything's going to be hunky-dory <laughs> because people mess with these old cars and they change things around and you say well I didn't get the right hose or I didn't this doesn't fit right so you really have to be careful. And what I've done in the past is usually I ask people, I said, look, if you want me to supply you with a specialty FID kit for a model that I don't list on my website, you're going to have to send me some pictures, particularly European models, because European models may have different outlets in the accumulator. They may have a different hose. So it can drive you absolutely crazy trying to supply a complete, I'm talking about a complete kit for a 6.9 and when I had people ask me about this I said no I, I really don't want to do it maybe the demand's not high enough but the more research I did the more I realized a lot of these systems are the same on some of the old 450 SELs non 6.9 so I'm going to supply a kit but I'm going to call it either a two hole accumulator kit or a one hole accumulator kit and I'm going to require that you get under your car and look at what you have before you place the order. Let me explain why. These are fuel accumulators that were used in these fuel systems. Some of you may wonder, well, what's an accumulator for anyway? Well, let me explain what's inside. On this side, you have a big spring and you have a diaphragm here and this is a fuel chamber. So fuel comes in from the pump and leaves the accumulator going out to the feed line to the engine. Now notice the difference here. You have one accumulator that has two holes and one that just has one, okay? Now you know where I'm going on this two hole, one hole. But what the accumulator does, it holds fuel pressure. It stabilizes and holds fuel pressure. It does things like when you shut the engine off, there'll be pressure held in here so your hot start will be a lot quicker when you come back to start the car after a few minutes. And Mercedes seemed to go through a bunch of different evolutions of the system, particularly beginning about 1975 up to 1980. They had three or four different <laughs> variations. I think they were trying to stabilize fuel pressure in the way they routed the lines and the types of accumulators they had on these cars. Now, some may say, well, how do I know that the accumulator is bad? Do I need to replace it? Well, consider the age of most of these cars. We're talking over 40 years old. <laughs> now, you can determine whether or not the accumulator is bad by pulling off this line. This is the spring chamber side. There should not be fuel in this side. If it starts to leak, this line will go back to the damper so you're not dripping fuel on the ground. But you can tell whether or not your accumulator is bad by removing this line here and seeing if any fuel leaks out. If that's the case, well, you need to replace the accumulator. What I found on these old cars, particularly if they've been in storage a long time like this 6.9, is just replace this. It's not that expensive. If you're going to go to all the work to change the pump, the filter, and all these fuel lines, change the accumulator. Because if it's working now, it may not be working <laughs> as you start driving the car more often. Because what happens is that diaphragm in there deteriorates and then it will lose pressure and allow fuel to leak from this chamber back into this chamber and leak out to the return line. So when I list these kits on my website, I'm going to note in the title, two hole fuel accumulator or one hole fuel accumulator. These were your early models and it varies from let's say 77 to 79. Most of these single hole accumulators show, started showing up in late 79, 80. And of course, this was, was common through the early 80s to have this type of accumulator, particularly like on the 380 SL. So what I want you to do before you order one of these FID kits from my website is you take the shroud off or get under there, get a good light and look. Look at the end of the accumulator and find out whether or not yours has two holes or one hole. If it has these two holes, then the system I'm going to show you now will work on your car. 
since I don't have a bracket assembly readily available, I'm going to put this together in a sequence which you would install this on the bracket assembly, and you're just going to have to imagine the bracket. But I want to say this about these brackets. They're all going to look like this. They're all going to be rusty and corroded, unless you have an absolute pristine 6.9 or 450 SEL. But when you take this bracket apart to clean it and repaint, a couple things I want to suggest. One is take a bunch of pictures. This will drive you nuts trying to figure out how to put it all back together unless you have some sort of reference if you haven't done this before. So just take your camera, take a few pictures from different angles, take a picture showing where the rubber uh, shock mounts are bolted on, which direction they come out, and then you can clean this up and paint it. Now, you're going to find that a lot of these screws are all rusty. And what I'm going to recommend is do not try to take them off. Just tighten them and break them off. It'll save you a bunch of time because we include new rubbers in the kit. And I also include a set of new screws and locking nuts for the bracket assembly itself. Now, if any of these screws are too long, you just cut them off. But this will be enough for you to put that bracket together. So when you get this kit, you clean up and paint your bracket assembly, which includes the holder, you know, for the filter, the accumulator, the pump, and so on. You won't have to worry about saving any of the hardware that's on it. Just break it off. Cut it off. <laughs> Don't waste your time trying to soak it up with rust penetrant and try to get it, get it off there. So that's just a hint. It'll go a lot faster if you do that. So what you do is you're going to start out with the tank outlet hose. And I will show you on another video that is included with the kit on how we modify the original hose fitting to fit on this hose. This is a much better hose than the braided hoses that you'll buy as normal replacements. It lasts a lot longer. You know, I am not a fan of braided hose. You've heard me harp on this numerous times. Braided fuel hose tends to rot much quicker. Look at this. This was a hose that was on this uh, damper going from the damper to the pump. So we provide a, a much better high quality fuel hose that's the correct size that you can make your own outlet hose coming from the tank. And that'll go right onto the damper like this. Now you're gonna see this damper and you say, Kent, that doesn't look like my damper. Well, it's not a damper from a 6.9. I didn't have one. But you can see how tight this hose fits, which will really prevent any kind of leak. So, there it is, uh, coming from the fuel screen, you'll come down to the damper, and then you'll have a short section hose. Now, both these hoses you cut to length. Compare what comes out of your car and just cut it to length. Same with this short hose. It may be a little shorter. Just cut it to match up to the original hose that you remove. So from the damper, the fuel goes directly into the pump, this end of the pump. So this will be your orientation on the pump. I'm not going to shove these all the way in, but this will give you an idea. Okay, there you go. That's the beginning part of it. Then you'll put this on the bracket. Then you'll have to install the filter, and the filter goes like this. Um, you notice this pump is a little bit different. To the replacement pumps have this particular fitting on the end, which is different from the original banjo bolt. So we have to provide this nut and these copper washers in the kit. And then you have this short hose. Very special short hose that runs from the pump to the inlet of the filter. That will also have new copper washers, but you'll have to use your original banjo bolt here, okay? So you put one copper washer on one side, you put the other one on this side, and you're going to tighten this down. Now what I do is I leave all these fittings loose until I get it mounted up in the bracket. But make sure you come back and retighten or tighten everything or double check it before you ever install it in the car. Now, <laughs> where does the outlet from the filter go? The outlet from the filter goes into the accumulator and it comes with this special hose. And this padding around it keeps it from chafing because it's gonna rub up against some of these other components. So this goes on here, and this goes into the outboard hole. The center hole is your feed line to the engine. So this hose goes in here, like this. 
Okay, you're getting close now. You got one more hose. Now, I didn't have the correct hose here to shoot this video, but it'll be a straight hose. This is the one that's really hard to get, the feed hose, from the accumulator to the hard line going up to the engine. It has a fitting on this end like this fitting. But for the purpose of this video, the feed hose is going to go here, and it'll be a straight hose, and that'll run up to that hard line going off to the engine. Then you have one final hose. This is the drain hose for the accumulator. This is a very special braided hose. You're probably thinking, well, can't you just said you don't like braided hoses. Well, this one is, is not as critical as your feed hoses, but it's the only one I could find the correct size, and we provide the small clamps that you'll need. This goes on the end of the accumulator, and this goes right back to the fuel damper. So you can see what happens here. Any fuel that may leak out of the accumulator can run right back down here to the damper, and then it's sucked right back into the pump and recirculated. I think that will give you a pretty good idea what's involved and why this kit has to be so extensive. Because when you get in here and you start working on this, you know, you won't say, oh, well, this fuel hose doesn't look too bad. Oh, this one doesn't look too bad. Well, you really need to replace everything because if you just replace the pump and the filter, you're going to have problems with these fuel hoses, I, I can warn you. So there it is. There is the FID kit for the 6.9 and the later 450 SCLs with a smaller V8. This will be available on my website. I also have kits for other years and models, so be sure and check them out. And for you 6.9 owners out there watching this, I know for sure you're going to be happy to be able to get a complete kit to restore your own FID.